How to build the Blackgate's twin steam engine. This is part 12, the assembly continues. And it's also a very important part of the assembly process. I'm going to be fitting the trunnion pins. And these pins allow the cylinder to oscillate across the ports. Tightening the trunnion pins into the hole in the cylinder block is not the way to do it. I recommend using some Loctite 603 and fitting these trunnion pins into the cylinder block finger tight only. Here's the procedure. Apply some Loctite 603 to both the thread on the trunnion pin and the hole in the cylinder. And then really quickly, in fact immediately, put the trunnion pin through the port block on the standard. Very quickly fit the spring followed by the nut. Then tighten the nut to compress the spring and hold the cylinder firmly against the port face. Do this on both of the cylinders and trunnion pin assemblies and leave them for about an hour. Before I get a barrage of questions, why do you need to do it this way? Well, it's quite simple. If you screw the trunnion pin into the cylinder using the double lock nut method, owing to the clearance of the screw thread in the hole, the trunnion pin may not end up at a perfect 90 degrees to the port face. And this would be disastrous because the port faces would not be perfectly flat against each other. Then steam would leak out between the port face on the standard and the port face on the cylinder. By employing my gentler method, finger tight only and Loctite 603, when you clamp the cylinders in place using the springs, the port faces end up in perfect alignment. Time now to fit the crankshaft. And as you can clearly see from this clip, I really am making sure that everything is oily. I don't build too many oscillating cylinder engines. But over the years, I have assembled and repaired the small oscillating cylinder engines that used to be made by Cheddar Models. And on the Cheddar Models assembly instructions, this is how it tells you to assemble the trunnion pins. Apart from oiling the external parts of the engine, I also pumped some oil through the steam inlets on both cylinders. And now when I test run the engine using my trusty DeWalt drill, you can see some of the oil coming out. After running the engine quite slowly for quite a while, I increase the speed, and here the speed is quite ridiculous, but it's rotating very freely and nothing's dropped off it yet. And it's surprisingly smooth in operation. Don't forget that the engine is sat on my soundboard. During these initial tests, I stopped the engine frequently and flooded it with oil, and once again, I injected some more oil into the inlet ports. And here, as I run the engine slowly, you can see the oil being pumped out of the port at the other side, underneath. And the oil being pumped through the cylinders is coming out quite clean at the other side. The dirty black oil on the bench is what's spinning off from the big ends. And I would expect this on a brand new engine that's running in. I'm surprised how free running this engine is. When I lift it up into the air off the soundboard, it's almost silent. I like things to be on the soundboard so that I can hear where there's a mechanical problem and I'm pleased to announce with this first engine it's working very well indeed. In this clip I'm holding my finger over the steam inlet port and I can clearly feel the suction when the engine's running. And that's a sure sign of a good seal between the piston port face and the standard port face. So that is one engine more or less done. I have to pipe it yet but I can't do that until the end. Now is a good time to paint the base with etching primer. I'm only going to paint the middle part of the base. The top of the base and the sides of the base I'm going to leave in natural brass. One down, one to go. Time now to work on the second of the engines. But before I do that, I'm going to give the first engine a compressed air test. I can only run it on one side, so it will be dragging the other cylinder. Let's see how it goes. As you can see from the previous clip, this engine runs very well indeed, and that's just on one side. 
24 hours has now elapsed since I painted the base using etching primer. Now I'm painting it with some black paint. While I was waiting for the paint to dry, I assembled the other engine, and here I'm midway through the running in process using my electric drill as previously shown. And this engine runs just as well as the first one. The second engine that you've just seen running has the longer crank pin, and this is how I propose to connect the engines together. I'm going to machine a phosphor bronze disc that fits to the crankshaft of the first engine, and this disc will have a slot in it which will engage the crank pin on the second engine. It's a very simple principle and it's self aligning. It doesn't have to be a slot, it could be a 3 16th of an inch diameter hole. But a phosphor bronze slotted drive disc is the first method I'm going to try, as it will make it a very quick job to remove either or both of the engines. The test run is going well, here's some slow motion. That was on compressed air and once again using only one cylinder, so the engine runs just as well as the other one. And that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.